Super Mario Brothers was a success, and Nintendo wasted no time creating a sequel, appropriately enough, called Super Mario Brothers 2. There was almost nothing new about it. Same engine, same controls, same music, same sprites. The graphics and items were updated, though. But the main attraction is the gameplay. Oh boy, the gameplay. I am sad to say that I couldn't get my own footage of the original release for the Famicom. But I did the next best thing. I have footage from the Super Mario All-Stars port. I'm going to skip ahead briefly to 1993 to talk about this. Super Mario All-Stars was a compilation of the three Super Mario Bros. games re-released for the Super NES with enhanced graphics. A fourth game, Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels, was included. Most non-Japanese players at the time didn't realize it, but this was the original Super Mario Bros. 2. Why didn't they get it? Let's find out. Unlike SMB1, there isn't a two-player mode. You get a Mario game and a Luigi game. Mario controls exactly as he did in the original. Luigi jumps higher, but is a lot more slippery. Gameplay-wise, it takes the difficulty of the original and cranks it up to 19. Remember those hidden blocks that were mostly used as secrets? Yeah, now you need them more than ever. Take this castle, for instance. Castles 4, 7, and 8 in SMB1 require that you take a specific route in order to progress, otherwise the stage would move. Anyone can find out the right paths on their own. They just need to think. Here, you have to make the route appear by hitting a row of invisible blocks and using them as a platform. Yeah, not cryptic at all. Small and desperate for a power-up? Too bad, you're going to get a poison mushroom. Touching one is just like touching an enemy. And while we're on the same subject as power-ups, finding a fire flower and keeping the skill will be a luxury. Remember how annoying the Hammer Brothers were? Late in this game, you get a bloodthirsty version that zeroes in on you. You remember Coin Heaven and the bonus rooms? They're back. But half of them won't get you far. In fact, some of them will flat out send you backwards if you're not lucky. Wanna know what else can send you backwards? Warp zones. You have green trampolines that send you flying off screen and areas with heavy wind making you jump further, but won't let you stand still. Annoying leaps that you can barely make plague the game. This is especially grievous when you have to jump on a Koopa Paratrooper at the precise time to reach a platform. Think you can bypass much of the stage you're on by running at the top of the screen? Sometimes. But the game can really screw you over on Castle 7. But think is even more ridiculous in World 8-3. Not only do you have to worry about pits in this first part, there's also a Lakitu and Spiny. After that, Homie Hammer Brothers. There is a coin heaven, though, but it only advances you slightly ahead. Oh, found a star man? Well, that's going to ruin your chance of crossing that pit. And guess what's waiting for you on the other side? More Psycho Hammer Brothers. If by some miracle you can get past them, you'll need to make a makeshift runway to reach the scales. But stay away from the poison mushroom that comes out. You weigh down the left scale enough, get on the right, leap to the tiny platform, and finally try to touch that flagpole. Ugh. Castle 8 is a nightmare continuing World 8-3's legacy. A series of bad jumps mixed with looping segments, fire bars, and a trap that almost sends you back to the start. I lost so many lives just trying to round that one tile on the first screen. When you beat Bowser, you are on top of the world.
thought that was disappointing, you should have seen the ending of the Famicom version. Peace is paid with Kingdom Saints. Arata Morium, our only hero. This ends your trip of a long friendship. But the game doesn't stop there. If you play straight through all eight worlds without warping, you'll play a ninth world that you'll have to beat without dying once. You can unlock four bonus worlds as well, but here's a topper. In the Famicom version, you have to beat the game eight times in a row! EIGHT TIMES! You think that's enough? Stop that the movement over well with parents. Okay, turn that thing off right now. I might be wrong in some sort of internal memory thing can keep track of each completion so you're gonna have to beat it eight times in one sitting. But all I can say is that at least with the All-Stars version, you only have to beat it once to get to World A. At least there's one thing improved with this reissue, because if you play this game, this image will be burned into the back of your brain. Another positive for the 16-bit version? You can start at the beginning of any stage. Not just the beginning of the furthest world you got to, but any of its four parts had you saved your progress. Gee, I wonder why they did that. Japanese Super Mario Bros. 2, in the long run, is not a very pleasant experience. I know that difficulty doesn't automatically make a game bad, but this is going overboard. But DOA, Lost Levels is the real sequel to SMB1. Perhaps, but adds very little to the Mario series. Poison Mushrooms and a High Jumping Luigi. That's it. But it's for people who've mastered SMB1. It even says for super players on the cover. Not much of a sequel, huh? If it's just a harder version of the original, they might as well have called it Super Mario Bros. The Championship Edition. Oh wait, they kind of did that. There's nothing wrong with a hard game. I just said that. I let's play most of the classic series Mega Man games and the first Castlevania. In those games, it's your fault if you get killed. In Lost Levels, though, the stage design looks like it came from an SMB1 ROM hack. In fact, that's what the game amounts to. It's a glorified ROM hack. The true heroes of this game were neither Mario nor Luigi, but Howard Phillips and then-president of Nintendo of America, Howard Lincoln. They both played it, and they too called it overkill. As a result, Nintendo had to get a different game of theirs and reskin it for international distribution. And we'll cover that one next time. Oh crap. Don't know how I did that, but I'll take it. Okay, leave a face! Oh, what, what, oh! How am I supposed to see that? Uh, I wonder how the Japanese reacted to this game. Yukai!